Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at shell redirection and piping. In this previous video, we made use of the echo command to redirect some contents into a file, but that is not all about shell redirections. So it's expected that at the end of this video, we will be able to manipulate data, automate tasks, and become more proficient in using the shell command line interface. So let's get to it. Shell redirection, as the name implies, is just simply redirection or redirecting. But in this case, it's the process of changing where the input or output of a command comes from or goes. That allows you to redirect the standard input, the information given to the command, the standard output, the output that the commands bring out, commands like ls that give you the list of files. This output it gives out, uh, it displays is the standard output and the standard error of the command. The errors that, that pops up on your shell interface when maybe you put in the wrong commands or you like the wrong commands or you're going to try to automate the wrong process, you receive errors. So, these are what is referred to as the standard error of the command. So, there are some key symbols in which we use for this redirection. Symbols like this greater than sign, which will direct the standard output of a command into a file. That is, if the file does not exist. If it exists, it will, it will overwrite everything that is in that file. That means it's only what you redirect that will be present in that file. I will show you about that shortly. Then the double greater than sign, which is this, appends the output of the redirection to the end of the file. That is, if you have another file, like it's being showed over here, double greater than, the appended this, this I got the redirected into the end of this file. But I'll still show you it in a second. Then the less down sign takes um, a file as the standard input. That is, redirect standard input that comes from a file. And this two greater than symbol redirect the standard errors to a file. Let's do a little, a little practical um, redirection. So, if you use the ls command, it displays the files in the current directory, and this display is the output of this ls command. That means this command can be redirected into a file, and let me name this file in current directory .txt. And if you check this files over there, and if you open the file, you'll find out that our file have been listed in that directory. And not just a file, an executable, any executable can be redirected into a file. Instead of displaying it on your terminal, you redirect the output or the result into another file. And to save you from having to um, piling up your screen with um, jargons or whatever it is. Let's see, say, you know, the why this is necessary because sometimes the output might be a lot and you don't want your screen filled up with those kind of things. Like now, if I should check what is in my bin directory, you can see it, there are a lot and the, the commands I lost, so it's filling my screen. And sometimes when you run programs, it can also be that much. So instead of all that, you can just redirect it into a file. And also, the double greater than, like I, show, I showed you, we direct content into another file. Let's check what is here. Okay, this is a new file, I'm going to learn VI. Okay. So let's redirect another thing into that file. Maybe if I should create this, um, let me put old file. .txt and this file will be redirected. All right. So let me save this. And that same way I can redirect this old file into the end of the new file. All 
right so now if we check the new file the content is below so that's the direction for you and also remember i showed you the less than symbol which there's some commands that requires input from your files some of these commands like grep sort lots of them they require an input for a file as a file like this run.txt you can see random um, letters i typed in and i want to redirect it into a command and i decided to sort it because sort command just um the sort commands arranged in alphabetical order arrange a file sort lines of lines of text file so that's what the sort command do and i can decide to take that file as an input and redirect it into that sort command and you can see what is being displayed this the file that the letters or alphabet that was scattered was being arranged so that is how you can make use of redirection and the two greater than symbols for errors some errors you can come across uh, when you put errors that doesn't like commands that don't exist or a, a command that crashed you will receive errors so some of these errors you can just decide to redirect it redirect it into another file And if you see, you can see our error file over there. If we open the error file, you can see our error. So that is that for redirection. Let's move on to the next. So piping is a process of connecting outputs of one command as input of another command, allowing you to share multiple commands together. That means you're being you're passing the command from you're passing the output of one command into another command. You're chaining multiple commands together, just like telling your system to do multiple things. List these files. After I list this file, display it here, then move this display file into another file. Okay. And do stuff like that. I can make out anything to suit. You can chain multiple commands to suit what you want to do. Uh, let me do a very simple pipe example we all know that if we list the file it displays the current files in the directory and if you make use of grep grep search for patterns you can check for it here grep you can see it's print line that match patterns okay and if i use this grep command get so if i use if i decide to pipe command like this i want instead of listing all the files in this directory i want it to list only my .txt files i can pipe it this way grab and .txt okay and you can see instead now it only displays my files that have the .txt so it's listing the files in the directory but because of the grep command is featuring those files to give me only the .txt file and i can also pipe another command maybe the word, co word count command to count the number of files in that directory okay i can use the word count flag well and now it give me the number of files that have the .txt and do man wc to know what it does print new line word and um, byte count for each file so these are useful commands you would come across and use for instance now okay i have a this test driven file okay i was running a a test on a function I wrote as it to learn um, some learn um, text driven development 
you don't need to know much about that so and I piped a command like this so this is for running docs test and I want only the last two just to see the important details at the end of the test and when I run it I can see 16 pass and 0 field if I should remove this pipe remember a tail command displays the last 10 lines and by specifying minus 2 I've told it to display the last two lines of that file if I should remove this what I get is lots of lots of this they're all contents but all of this I can decide to overlook all this because I just wanted to go straight to the point and show me how many items passed and filled so because of that now I pipe it and it now show me the last two lines so that is piping for you pipe can is very useful and as you work with the shell term now by the time you come across on some issues you notice that I require you to pipe more than one command together to solve those particular issues even when you are scripts and writing shell scripts you make use of pipes pipe a lot and redirection a lot so that is all for this video thanks for watching remember to like and subscribe if you found this video useful and turn on your notification button to receive more updates when I drop more video. Thank you.